Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Kev Shed and welcome to another video with my lovely VFR 800 VTEC. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this video is we are going to be carrying out a uh, rebuild, um, or about a teardown and a rebuild of the, the clutch master cylinder on this bike. Um, it's probably never been looked at since the bike was uh, manufactured, so it's about time we, uh, you know, did did replace the seals and all that sort of stuff to make sure that it carries on operating in good order. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using one of these kits. Um, it's from Tormax. Uh, Tormax make quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of different uh, aftermarket parts, including regulator rectifiers. Although I wouldn't use a Tormax regulator rectifier on my bike personally. Um, obviously, um, we've we've documented that quite a lot over the last couple of years. Um, but uh, I'm going to give one of these uh, rebuild kits a go. See if it's any good. I can't see why it wouldn't be. Um, but obviously first thing we need to do uh, before we can pull the master cylinder off is we need to drain down the uh, drain down the fluid uh, from the system so that we don't uh, you know it doesn't get too messy so that's what we'll do first and then uh, we can you know we can begin the uh, begin the tear down <laughs> Okay, so now that we've drained as much of the uh, the fluid out of the system and given the inside of the reservoir a good clean out, uh, well, as good, as good a clean as it can do, um, what I'll probably do is once we've got it off, I can, I can you know, be a little bit more meticulous. Um, but what I've done, obviously got some of my workshop rag and we can now, <sighs> there we go, just break off the, the banjo. It's a 12 mil spanner that's required to take that off and then we can then remove the brake line from the master cylinder and I'm going to leave that bit of tissue wrapped around it just to prevent any fluid dripping onto you know dripping on a bodywork or, or anything like that so now we've got that off what we'll do now is we will remove the lever Right, taking the lever off, dead easy. There's a 10 mil, 10 mil nut underneath, which just needs to be loosened up. It's basically just a lot nut to prevent the, the screw winding itself out because obviously that would be bad, especially on the brake side. And then we can undo the screw just like so. Out of the pivot and then pop it out and now what we can do is we can take the lever remembering this rod as well so we'll keep them together pop the pivot bolt back through and i'll pop the screw uh, the, the nut back on the screw so that it's all together and there we are so i can put this to one side and then we can look at removing the uh, master cylinder from the bars but first what i'm going to do is just disconnect the electrical connector from the, the, the clutch safety switch um just like so okay next let's get the actual uh, reservoir off the bar all right there to remove it from the bar dead easy it's just these two bolts here they obviously also hold on the controller for the heated the oxford heated grips so that's worth bearing in mind but if the grips weren't on it it would just be a case of just loosening these two bolts and then they would be free to come out so the bottom one dead easy just pull it out the top one because the uh because the grips are there has a little spacer behind it you can see the little silver spacer so don't we don't want to lose that and there we go right what we are doing now is we are losing a little bit of fluid from the reservoir and obviously i want to try and clear that up as quickly as i possibly can but there is the reservoir removed and what i need to do is obviously i need some more hands than i've got um so let's 
recover all of this stuff. And there we go, now that can just be left hanging down. Yeah, as I uh, removed it, obviously it tipped over and a little bit of fluid came out. So what I do need to do is obviously quickly uh, clean up all the spillage uh, before it does any damage. There's no paintwork um, really to speak of around the bike um, other than the nose cone anyway, so I'm not too concerned um, about uh, you know damaging any paint, but I don't want to leave it there. So I'll clean it up and then we uh, can move over to the bench and we can look at pulling apart the master cylinder. Okay, here we are over at the bench with the clutch master cylinder. I've uh, given a bit of a clean up to the, uh, you know, for the fluid, the fluid that I uh, that I spilled a moment ago. But yeah, what we need to do now is obviously strip uh, the components for the master cylinder out of this body. So firstly, what we need to do is the the rubber boot that's over the top. We can just pull it out, and as you can see, it's actually pretty. Uh, you know, it's in a pretty poor condition anyway. So if we give it a tug; it'll pull out. Uh, just like so, and as you can see, it's it's not in particularly great condition anyway. So it was ripe for uh, you know for uh, replacement. Now inside here, if I blow out a bit of the rubbish, um, you can see inside there is a circlip. Um, hopefully, you can uh, you can see that there's a circlip uh, inside there. And what we need to do is we need to remove it. So I've got a pair of circlip pliers and. What I'm going to do is get them into position. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be able to show you this too well because there isn't the room. Um, but what I do need to do is get them positioned so that I can actually get it out. And These aren't going to be, to be fair, these, these circular pliers aren't actually the best for this job because this lug here actually engages on the outside of the housing, so it's not actually all that beneficial, but um, I'll struggle on. In fact, I think what we'll do is I will get this circle out and then I'll bring it back once we've got it out. Right, there we are, there's the uh, the circlip out. What I ended up doing was actually make, forcing the circlip to rotate that way so that it gave me a bit more room to get my pliers in um, from that kind of angle instead of trying to, you know, interfere with the housing. Um, but now that that circlip's out, the spring exerts itself and then the whole piston with the spring can be removed and there we there we go so if we pull the spring off the end of the piston you can see what the inside of the uh, the master cylinder actually looks like now as we can see here we've got two seals on um, and they are, again are orientated in a certain direction so when we rebuild we need to make sure that the skirt um, of the seal points this way towards the spring and obviously the orientation of the spring is important as well because it actually does clip over the end of the piston right what we need to do next is we need to give the inside of the master cylinder a ruddy good clean so we'll get that all spick and span and then what we can do is we can look at um, the rebuild kit and see what we've got inside to put it all back together again Okay, so that is the master cylinder. Really, really nice and clean. Um, I've given the bore a good clean out as well to uh, get any dirt out of there. And the inside of it has uh, had a nice scrub too. So what we can do now is we can open up our rebuild kit, just like so. It gives you a little bit of, uh, um, you know, information. When you work on brake system, especially master cylinder, special knowledge or skill is required. Um, apparently not because I'm doing it. So, <laughs> right, um, what we'll do, we'll open up the little bag, uh, come up and tip all the little bits out, just like so. There we go, right. So, we've got a brand new cover, which as you can see <laughs> is in a lot better condition than that one. Um, new spring, new piston, new circlip, and then we've got the two new seals, um, which 
are just like the ones that came off. Um, one is slightly different to the other, however, um, the, the profile of them is ever so slightly different. And if we look at the one that came off, we can see that the top one here is the one that has ever such a slight lip at the top, whereas the bottom one doesn't have that lip. So we'll put them on in exactly the same way. So what we'll do is we will um, give the seals a little bit of help to get on with a little bit of red rubber grease and then we will pop them over the top like so shouldn't need any tools to get them on it's just a case of stretching them on over the top of the of the lip obviously with the with the grease it does make it a little bit slippery but it does help overall screwdriver behind it just making sure that I don't nick it and there we go and there we are that's it now seated in position same again for the other one a bit of a coat of uh, red rubber grease and we'll stick this one on here It's just like trying to wrestle a wrestle a greasy pig. And again, making sure that I don't nick it, I'm gonna just use a screwdriver just to get it over. Oops. <laughs> get on, what do you get? And there we are. Took a little bit of effort to get it on, but it is now on. And there we go. As we can see, this is all ready to go back into the master cylinder. All we need to do is pop the new spring on, just like so. And then there we are. That is ready to uh, ready to fit back in. Now, obviously, it goes in that way. And then what we've got to do is we've got to get the circlip on over the top to hold everything into place. So what we'll do, we'll give another little coat of red rubber grease. You can use brake fluid if you want to, to lubricate it. Um, I prefer to use red rubber grease because it's less messy. Right, now what we need to do is pop that in there like so, and then we need to fit it into the housing, but what we've got to be careful of is that the the two seals don't like fold back in on themselves. Um, they, they will like to turn inside out if uh, they're given the opportunity. So it's a case of just getting them in, just gently turning them so that they go in like so. And that, that one was good. And then hopefully that one will go in just the same, which it has. And there we go. So now we've got the, the master cylinder down in position. What we need to do is get the, get the circlip on. And this is where you need three hands. Get the circlip on over the top and just like so. And pop it down. And then what I'm gonna do I'm going to get the circuit pliers and 
compress the circlip until it fits in place which it almost is as you can see it's not fully seated so what I'll do is just gently push down with my screwdriver and there we go now now it's fully seated and you can see that it's actually engaged into the groove on the inside a lot easier to get in than it was to get out but um, yeah it is what it is okay so there we go now what we need to do is just fit the fit the boot back into there and I'm going to give this a little a little bit of red rubber grease just to aid fitment it should help it slide into slide into place properly and I'm going to put a little bit on the inside just to keep the rubber nice and supple and then pop that into position and then gently gently push it home with a large flat bladed screwdriver and there we go really is that easy so that is the master cylinder rebuilt all we need to do now is uh, reassemble it all onto the bike I'm just going to give the pin a little bit of a clean and then that will get a good dab of red rubber grease prior to go back on so what we'll do now we'll take this back over to the bike and we can get it back onto the bars okay here we go right so to assemble it back to the bike what we need to do is obviously get everything together um, so we can just pop it all back together now these two bolts one is long ever so slightly longer than the other and the longer one is the one that goes with the bush and that is the top one the bottom one goes um, through the bottom of the bracket but it all has to go together kind of like so then the bush and then the bolt so that is all there now ready to go back on and then what we've got to do is again with our three hands is assemble it we need to get each of the bolts started once they're started we're laughing but we need to get them all together first and there we go so we've got them we've got them started what i'm going to do i'm going to leave them loose so i can adjust where how i want it um, um you know up or down or whatever so i'm not going to actually tighten these as yet so what we can do now is we can reassemble the uh, clutch line which goes on to that end of the master cylinder and obviously we need to reinstall the lever so i'll go and grab the lever off the bench and we'll get that done first okay there we go set the pivot pin out and there's the nut and there's the greased pin now what we need to do is ensure that the pin goes in through the boot like it has and then we need to slightly compress it and pop the screw through the lever like so and then we can screw it down tighten it up and there we are next we can put the the nut on the bottom the 10 mil nut and again just give that a little tighten just to ensure that the the screw can't come out and there we go that is the lever reinstalled and you can hear the piston inside the master cylinder doing its thing right what we need to do now is we need to reinstall the clutch line 
Right then, here's the, uh, here's the banjo bolt that we removed. What we need to do is take off the, the old washers because they're gonna be discarded and we're gonna fit nice shiny new ones. One that side and one that side. Get the uh, banjo in the right place and simply tighten it up. Okay, now this is a 12 mil bolt. We'll just tighten this up. And I think the torque on these from memory is around about 28 Newton meters, but I'll check the manual and obviously ensure that we torque this to the right spec. And there we go. Okay, what we can do now is just look at the position of the lever, make sure we're happy with where it's sitting. And then what we can do is tighten these two screws evenly. There we go. Okay, there we go, that's nice. Perfect, right, okay. Last thing we need to do um, is we need to just reconnect the clutch switch wiring on the back here and that is that then all that's left to do is um, fill it with fluid and bleed any air out now I'm not going to do that on this video because I've done that countless times um, and we've already done a video on it so I'll leave a link to that up in the corner now um, if your device doesn't allow you to click um, video card links then I'll also leave the link in the description below so you can go and do that but yeah that is a process for rebuilding a clutch master cylinder on the VFR 800. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, this video. Um, pretty straightforward, it's not actually that taxing. Um, probably the most difficult part of it is actually bleeding the air out. Um, but yeah, once uh, once you're at this stage, that's what we'll uh, what you'd have to do next. Um, thank you for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope find it useful. If you did, then hit that thumbs up button because it really does help. Um, you know, it helps YouTube uh, recognize that people enjoyed my videos. So if you did, then uh, then by all means go and do that. Join me on the socials. I'll leave the links to uh, all three of those: Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook in the uh, in the description below. Join us over there, um, and uh, I'll see you all again, guys, for the very next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye now.